Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to do a BIOS update for your HP 245 G8 model laptop. We will cover other models as well, so if you haven't got exactly the same model, then the same principles will apply, although the BIOS files will be different. But we'll go through that and you can work out exactly which ones are going to be the correct for your particular laptop. So, some of the things you're going to need for this particular thing obviously, you're going to need the laptop in a working condition. If you come onto this video and your laptop is in a state where it won't boot up or you do have a corrupted BIOS, don't worry, we will be doing a follow-up video on that on how to restore a BIOS if it becomes corrupted, although you'll see some of that actually in this video anyway, but there will be a dedicated video for that anyway. Something else you'll need is a USB drive that's going to be handy to have, more so for the recovery side of things or if you're actually downloading it on a separate computer and you want to transfer it to your new computer, then a USB drive may be recommended. Also something which really you should be using is the actual power brick and a main supply. So whenever you're doing a BIOS update on your laptop or any device for that matter, make sure you've got stable power. Luckily with a laptop, you've got a battery which is included obviously with the unit itself. So having the mains power on as well, should there be any outages, at least then you can resort back to battery power to confirm the rest of the BIOS update. So with that out of the way, let's get on with it. And there will be links in the video description so you can go straight to the HP support site for this particular model. Obviously again, like I said, depending on your model, you may need to put in your serial number. So if you have got the box for your particular laptop or desktop or whatever it is available, make a note of the serial number, which is printed on the side. You may need to add that to the actual section in HP support just to gain access to it. Their support system is a little bit weird. You can't just go along and choose a specific kind of brand of laptop. They either want to be able to install some software on your machine or do it via serial number. Or alternatively, you can do it the way I did it, which is just go into Google, type in the model number and BIOS, and you should find the link straight away. Anyway, like I said, there will be links in the video description. So we're actually on our site here. So this is for this particular model. This is the HP 245 G8 notebook. This is using a Ryzen 5500U processor, and it's relatively new. Now something also that you should be aware of with this is the fact there are actually two BIOSes in effect for HP laptops. So you've got one which is the actual kind of main BIOS, which is the kind of the regular one for the AMD processor, but there's also a system firmware BIOS as well, which is what is used for doing things like the recovery console and all that kind of stuff. Basically, when you start up the machine, press the function key and F2, it takes you into a kind of a separate sub BIOS, which is for recovering and tools for testing equipment, etc. So there is two BIOSes, a system firmware, and also the actual BIOS firmware. Yeah, a little bit confusing, but you'll get the idea as we go through. So with your particular unit, so you go through, identify your OS, and this is for the machine you're actually downloading it onto. It doesn't make a great deal of difference, but we're gonna select Windows 10. And on the other side there, you've got the options of Windows 10, Windows 11, and various older versions. Again, use whichever one you've got. We're using Windows 10 64-bit, so we're gonna select that. Once you've done that, click on Submit. And there you go, you've got the options. It comes, shows you all the drivers. There is a little plus icon down there. If you're not entirely sure, you can click on detect my drivers. It'll download another piece of software, more of HP's bloatware, and it will then analyze your system and work out exactly what is right for you. If you're not entirely sure, you can use that if you want to. Uh, we won't be on this particular instance. So we're gonna click on all drivers. So this is where you can get all the drivers for your device. So if you're having problems with your audio maybe or other things, then it might be worth looking at some of those things first before you do a BIOS update. It may not be absolutely necessary, but the BIOS is here. So at the top, we've got BIOS, and then underneath that, we've got BIOS system firmware. So just to differentiate the two, BIOS is for your main processor and things like security updates, that kind of stuff. The BIOS for the system firmware is for their kind of support structure, which lies underneath the BIOS, if that makes any sense. So let's go into BIOS. Now, the latest version for this particular model is F19 Rev A and that was released on the 26th of June, 2022, so it's about a month old at the moment, so that's absolutely fine. If you want to see older versions, if you click on the side there, and then go down to Associated Files or Previous Version, you can see all the other versions which have been made available, so starting off from F03 all the way up to the current version, so you can download that. So what you want to do is click on the file name here, sp140817exe, so it's an executable file, so what we're going to do is click on that to download it, you can, if you want to, use the HP Support Assistant. Um, entirely up to you. I will not do it. I will download it manually. And we'll get the option here to download the file. So it's going to come up. Depending on your browser, you may get a different option. 
I'm going to download this to my desktop just so it's easier to find. So I'll click on save. And pretty much that is it. That is all we need here. So we can minimize this now and we can double click the executable file. You will need user account control availability on this. So click on yes. And it basically goes through and tells you what it's all about there. Click on next. Accept the license agreement. You don't have any choice with that. And then it's going to actually extract the files to your C drive. Now you can do that if you want to, or you can, if you, of course, like I said earlier, if you want to put it onto a USB stick, you can do, just plug that in and choose drive D or E or whichever your drive letter is. But we're just going to choose this one, software setup. And make a note of the SP number. So this is SP140817. So we'll click on next and that will extract. And then we can open up my computer or file explorer, go into your C drive, go into SW setup. And there is our file SP140817. Double click on that. And then we've got our WinFlash EXE. So what we need to do is double click on that one. Again, user account control, click on yes. So this is now going to bring up the HP BIOS update and recovery. So we've got three options here. Update the system BIOS on this device. So we can do it directly from this machine here. We can also create a recovery USB flash drive, which again, this is where the USB comes in handy. Or you can just copy the BIOS image file to another device, again, USB drive or another location to use it on other devices. So if you're using your laptop and you're downloading it for another laptop, then you can do it that way. So we're going to click on next and then we can choose our option. So it says here, this utility will update the BIOS version to F1.9. So you've got the options here, update, create the restore drive or recovery drive or copy. So again, depending on what you want to do, you can do it either way. If you want to do it from the actual BIOS or through the update system, then you can do that. In which case I would do copy and just put it onto a USB drive. But for me personally, I will do it here. So update the BIOS on this device it requires restart. So we're going to click on next. So there we go, that is it, done and dusted. Now obviously you're probably noticing that the power supply is still on the table, so it isn't a specific requirement. Uh, we're lucky here that this is actually on uh, a battery which is brand spanking new out of the factory, but certainly I would certainly recommend before you click on next previously, plug in the power just to be on the safe side. So there we go, the bar is updated and prepared successfully. Please restart this device to complete the update. So we're gonna click on restart now. Now this part of the update, we won't be able to screen capture, unfortunately, because of the way it's done. It's done through the system's BIOS, so the secondary HDMI port isn't active on this. But you can see here what's going on, so HP BIOS update, it's updating the BIOS and it's got the progress meter. Again, like I said, this is the kind of scary part, so ideally you do want to have your power plugged in if at all possible. Um, this is a brand spanking new unit, so it's got basically a perfect battery, which is fully charged, so we shouldn't have any issues, but again, I should stress that ideally you would like to have your power supply plugged in and turned on. So after a quick reboot, it's come up with this message now. So this is doing the uh, PSP data, updated again. Just be patient and let it do its thing. And there we go, all done and dusted, and we're back into Windows. So we can log into the system now. At this point, you may want to go into the BIOS and just double check your settings. Effectively with these particular units, there isn't really a great deal you can configure other than things like TPM, secure boot, um, you can't change XMP settings or overclocking settings, anything like that. So there isn't really a great deal you can do anyway, but if you wanted to, again, you could go in and check it if you've made any specific changes, such as changing the function keys from being function keys to system keys, that sort of thing. But other than that, that is pretty much it. Now, again, our battery at the moment level is showing somewhere in the region of about 75%. So obviously we have done this on battery, but I would suggest if you can plug in the system into the mains, it's much, much safer way of doing it especially if you've got a slightly older device and maybe the battery isn't as good as it used to be because it can take a few minutes to do this and you don't want the battery running out, so take those precautions. Although I wasn't overly concerned because obviously these particular units do now have a BIOS recovery utility, which we'll be showing you in a follow-up video. So if things do go horribly wrong and the battery cuts out whilst it's trying to flash the system, then there's a very good chance you can recover it using the built-in recovery utility, which will be in the follow-up video. 
So anyway, hopefully that has been helpful to you. If it has, don't forget to smash the like button if you want more information or more help. And please reach out to us in the comments section below or join us on our Discord chat server. You're more than welcome to join. It doesn't cost anything. It's absolutely free, as is subscribing to our channel so you get content like this on a daily basis. Anyway, I think that's going to wrap this one up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.